Hello. This is the gearbox of the LEGO Land Rover Defender, and in this video I will briefly explain how it works. There are two key things to note. First are the input and output shafts of the gearbox. This long grey piece here is the input shaft, and the small red piece without anything attached to it is the output shaft. Rotational force is provided, typically by an engine, goes through the input shaft, into the gearbox, and exits from the output shaft. Second is the gear switching mechanism. It consists of this orange piece and these two grey pieces. When the orange piece is rotated, it shifts each of the two grey pieces into one of three positions, namely left, center, and right. In the central position, where the grey piece does not touch against any of the gear wheels, it is allowed to rotate freely, but when contact is made with one of the red gears, it becomes capable of transferring rotational force. By shifting the positions of the two grey pieces, a gear is selected and to make sure only one gear is ever selected at the same time, the two grey pieces move 90 degrees out of phase. This makes it possible to select between four different gears. Now I will explain how the rotational force at the input travels through the gearbox to allow for different amounts of rotational speed and torque at the output. Let's select first gear. As you can see, it is very easy to rotate the input shaft. However, by comparison, the output shaft rotates much slower. The rotational input travels from this small black gear into the larger beige gear, down the middle to this red gear, which has been selected by the gear selector, then into the gray gear, and to the tiny dark gray gear, and then into the largest dark gray gear. Finally, it exits from the output shaft. Because there are two transitions from a small gear wheel to a larger gear wheel, namely here and here, the speed of the rotations is greatly reduced, but the torque is increased. Next, let's select second gear. Though it is still fairly easy to turn the input shaft, there's clearly a little bit more resistance. The output shaft also rotates a little bit faster. This time, the input travels via this yellow shaft in the center of the gearbox, to these two gears in the back, and then to the selected red gear. Then it follows the path via the red gears, into the grey gear, into the tiny dark grey gear, and into the largest dark grey gear, and exits from the output shaft. This time there is only one transition from a smaller gear wheel to a larger one, namely here. So the torque is less compared to first gear, but the speed of the rotations is slightly faster. Next is third gear. It is becoming increasingly harder to rotate the input shaft. And the output shaft also rotates faster compared to second gear. This time the rotational input travels from the small black gear into the larger beige one and directly reaches the selected red gear right here and simply takes a direct path from the red gear to the grey gear and exits from the output shaft. In third gear the rotational input also only goes through one transition from a smaller to a larger gear wheel, namely here, but compared to second gear the ratio between the wheels is smaller, so the torque is decreased while the rotations are increased. Finally, here is 4th gear. 
it is it is now genuinely pretty hard to turn the input shaft and the output shaft also rotates much faster especially compared to first gear and fourth gear the input follows the longest path of them all it goes again through the center via the yellow shaft to the two gears in the back then it crosses over to this selected red gear on the other side follows the path of red gears to the gray gear and finally exits from the output shaft all the gear wheels in this path have a one-to-one -one gear ratio in relation to each other as a result the input shaft rotates just as fast as the output shaft and that's how that works i hope this video was informative thank you very much for watching